So I'm Brian Innes. I work at IBM, but I'm here today to represent the OKD community and the working group. So a quick show of hands, how many people have heard of or use OKD? Wow, a lot more than Dublin. So that's what we're going to talk about. And for those that don't know, OKD is actually a community version of OpenShift. It's free of charge. This is where the sales folks absolutely hate me because you don't even need a Red Hat account. It's freely available. You can just download it and stand it up. It is the OpenShift source code, but instead of being built on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, we use Fedora Linux. So Fedora is where all the new features arrive first. It's the most dynamic um, version of Linux that Red Hat uses. And this is also the first place that the OpenShift source code meets the new feature. So um, that's how you get access to it. OKD.io is our website. Um, and we stay in line with the OpenShift container platform. So currently 4.10 is our current release. Um, when 4.11 comes out, there's already nightlies available. But when 4.11 comes out, we'll actually have the nightlies available and then we'll switch over. So we do stay in touch. And for those that haven't seen it, this is what it looks like. So it is OpenShift. The only difference is the logo in the top corner. Um, and what you'll also notice, if you watch the Red Hat What's Next presentations, when they have screenshots, that logo appears quite often because this is also used within Red Hat for technology previews. And when Red Hatters need to get access to new features that aren't yet in Red Hat Linux, they'll use OKD. So what we're going to do is look at some of the things coming up in OKD, so the roadmap. This is where I may need to get some notes. So the first thing we want to talk about is CentOS Stream Core OS. So at the minute, there isn't a Core OS for CentOS Stream, but CentOS Stream is the halfway point between Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. You can think of it as it's what Red Hat Enterprise Linux next version is going to be. It is that. And what Red Hat are doing is they're creating a core OS on CentOS Stream. It's going to be called SCOS. And it's going to be created just for OKD. So like Red Hat Enterprise Linux is created just for the container platform, CentOS Stream core OS is going to be created for OKD. And what they're going to do is they're asking us, the community, so outside Red Hat, is this something useful? Is this something we want? Um, they're going to release a preview version. It's probably going to be July, August time. Um, and we're going to arrange sort of some experiments where people can play with it, get to, get to do with it. But if we want this as a community, Red Hat will actually then do a dual release where you can have OKD on FCOS, Fedora Core OS. That's where the latest and greatest stuff's going to come. That's not going to go away. That is going to be where the new features hit the code first. But they're also offering this hardened version, this CentOS Stream Core OS version. And if the community wants it, they will actually do that dual release. If we don't want it, nobody uses it, that'll just stay within Red Hat. So I'm going to ask you to sign up for a Twitter account at the end. And that's where we'll announce the availability. And we'll also then ask for feedback if this is something that we, the community, want to have, or whether it's something we, we're not really interested in. The next one, we actually talked about in the first session this morning when we looked at the OCP, the OpenShift Container Platform Roadmap. And this is that CoreOS layering. So if you're not familiar with CoreOS, it is the technology that's built for hosting container platforms. It's a lightweight operating system. It works very different from a traditional Linux distribution um, in that when it boots up, it boots from a standard image, and then it goes and overwrites itself with the image that's in this OS tree using something like the ignition file. 
And if you want to go and customize that image, it's difficult today. When OKD is built, we can't use the Fedora Core OS standard image. We have to customize it a little bit for OKD, and that's not an easy process. So what the layering is, it's a new feature. It's already in Fedora, um, and you can actually go play with it here. Again, the QR code takes you to that Git repo. And this is a way of using Docker files or container files, and you can actually use a CoreOS image as you're from, and then here we're just replacing a package with an updated package, and then that will go and create me a new version of CoreOS that I can then use as my base. Again, today, if you want to customize that image, you typically have to use um, a machine config um, custom resource to go and create that, and then that patches overlaid after your Kubernetes system, your, your OKD system is running. So this is going to give you the ability to customize that base image, put any new packages you want on, any customization, any configs you want on, and create the image. So if you want to play with it, there are some examples here. It's available today um, within the Fedora. And obviously, we're going to change the OKD build to use this technology, and that's what the work's been doing now. And eventually, then, that will come into OCP. And this last section is really about empowering the community. At the minute, has anybody tried to build OpenShift or OKD from source? It's not easy. Um, first of all, you have to navigate the 600 plus repos in the OpenShift organization, and then you have to try and work out how the Red Hat Prow build system works. And it's not an easy process. So within the community, we've been trying to find ways of making this easier, of simplifying this, and giving the community outside of Red Hat Firewall the ability to build their own releases much more easily. So it's a process that we're going through. And one of the options is this Operate First Cloud. So this is a community cloud run by the CI office in Red Hat. And we're looking at the option of setting up a build system, an OKD build system there, so the community can then start doing builds and start releasing things. Hot off the press, there was another conversation at the working group last night where um, the product manager for a new build system that Red Hat is looking to build, a managed system initially, um, they're looking at maybe using OKD as an early access to actually put an OKD build within that new build system that eventually will be rolled out throughout Red Hat. So what we're looking to do is provide the community a way to actually build OpenShift. And as an extension to that, we're going to launch a project where we get the community to build a set of operators and an operator catalog for OKD which contains some of the missing pieces. So if you use OKD, you'll be aware that a lot of the magic, like pipelines, like GitOps, are not available in the OKD catalog. So we want to use the ability that we're going to get with, with these initiatives to create a community catalog to add the missing pieces in. We've asked Red Hat to do this, but they're just, they've got so many res resource constraints that they're just not able to help us that quickly. So we're trying to empower the community to actually do this. So if you like the talks this morning on operators and you want to get your hands dirty, we are going to be looking for volunteers to come and help us join this effort um, to actually create a set of operators and a catalog for OKD. And some of the other things that are coming out are um, we heard again this morning, multi-architecture. Um, the advantage on the new build system is that's going to be multi-architecture enabled, and there is some work going on to actually do ARM builds and other builds for OKD, and again, we want to roll those out. And there's also quite a lot of work going on within Red Hat. Again, we heard it in the OCP roadmap. Again, it's, it's happening in OKD land as well on doing smaller deployments closer to the edge. So that's what's going on, and we're now going to talk about how this actually all manifests. 
and how, how, how we actually make this all happen. So OKD is actually managed by a working group. Um, we've got quite a good mix of industry, academic, home lab users, and Red Hatters. And we meet every second Tuesday. So the last meeting was last night. Um, and it's a conference call, uh, a video conference call, that happens at 5 p.m. GMT. So in summer, it goes to 6 p.m. UK time, and in winter, it's at 5 p.m. Don't know why we don't actually stick to a time, but we move as the seasons move. Um, and it's that group that actually manages OKD and the community. Um, look after the websites, the OKD.io, the docs, which is a copy of the OpenShift documentation modified for OKD. And then we've got a GitHub. Now, at the minute, that GitHub is actually within the OpenShift organization. And again, that causes us a few worries or a few concerns because getting community members that are not Red Hatters access to that to be able to manage commits on that is a little bit difficult because that is the organization looking after the Red Hat product. So Red Hat are, are, are not too keen on letting other people into that which is very understandable. So we're about to move to a Project OKD Git repo. So again, as we're going to stop building, we've created our own Git repo, and we've created our own project in key.io. So again, we want to enable and empower the community to actually do things on our own. We've launched a Twitter account, and that's when we're going to be announcing the trials so if you want to get into that SCOS version, if you want to look and play with the layering when it gets available, and if you want to help us with the operator work, we're going to announce everything through that Twitter. Um, you can find me on the Kubernetes Slack, and if you're a Fedora community member, we're also on Matrix. So happy if you want to re reach out. And we've got the calendar here. And all these details are available on okd.io. So if you just have that one URL, go to the working group section, and you'll find everything there. But that calendar is how you get into the working group. And I just want to say it can be a little bit daunting when you join a community for the first time. You turn up. You don't know what they're talking about. You just feel a little bit sort of adrift, and you're not quite sure what's going on. You are most welcome to come and join our calls. If you want to be a lurker for the first couple of times, just join, listen what's going on. I'm usually on there. Find me. There's a chat system. Send me a message. I'm quite happy telling you what's going on. Interrupt us and remind us that there's newbies on the call, because we, we're all in there every week, and we, we just sort of launch in and talk about the topics. If you're new and you're feeling a bit, I don't know what you're talking about, just, just either put something in the chat or just speak up and say, can you actually give us a bit of context here? We are a friendly bunch. So if you want to join us, you're more than welcome to come in. Our minutes are on okd.io, and on OpenShift TV, you will see all of our meetings. We actually record them and put them up there. And along with the main group, there are other communities and subgroups that we work with. So. We work very, very closely with Fedora and the Fedora Core OS. Um, they report every one of our main working group meetings, because obviously what they do influences OKD as the underlying platform. They tell us when new features are coming and work out how we integrate them. We have a document sub-working group, and that really is about managing interaction with the community. So we've just done some work to rebase the OKD website to make it easier. You had to be a front-end web developer to contribute, which we didn't think was a good model. So we've now changed it to a, just an, a, a markdown-based system. So it's very easy to contribute. And again, anybody that wants to get involved and help us with that. We've just started a section on the technical work, so how you develop for OKD. So if you're looking at the mysteries of what's in the release and how do I go from a release to where it came from, what Git repo, we're putting that information as we build these other communities um, and abilities to actually create our content, we'll put it up there. We have a community. We heard about the, the virtualization. 
Um, so we do have a community, a, a sub-working group, looking to create that capability within OKD as well. And then obviously we're talking to the Operate First Cloud. And that's it, thank you. So again, look at the Twitter account if any of that interests you in terms of getting access to that. Um, I'm around for the rest of the day. I think I'm gonna be around for the Ask Me Anything at the end of the session so we can take questions then. Thank you.